Right, today we are going to talk about the nerve supply to the lacrimal gland. A student who is really clear about the nerve supply of the lacrimal gland, right, it means he has very clear concept about the seventh cranial nerve, that is facial nerve. He is very clear about uh, greater petrosal nerve. He is very clear about trigopalatine ganglion, right, and certain other neuronal connection in the head and neck. So let's start with a very basic diagram first of all, that here is your orbit right and here is your lacrimal gland and we have to take the nerve supply from the central nervous system up to the lacrimal gland right and other important uh, parameters I would draw here middle cranial fossa right and yes let's suppose here is your middle cranial fossa here is your yes here should be maxilla right and here is your pterygopalatine yes fossa what is this this is pterygopalatine fossa which is just behind the upper part of maxilla under the back of the orbit and enter inferior to the middle cranial fossa right and of course this is going your yes so again interior cranial fossa yes middle cranial fossa and here it is coming posterior cranial fossa now the important structures which are present over here uh, we come to the brain stem from where the neuronal pathway will exit right so this is pons here it is medulla and there's no fun in telling this should be midbrain mid right and your fourth ventricle with cerebellum right and spinal cord of course but first of all when we are talking about nerve supply to a gland we need to talk about two pathways number one parasympathetic supply from where the parasympathetic pathways are coming and how they are reaching to this gland and number two sympathetic fibers so it means that we have to bring here yes para sympathetic fibers right uh, which are basically secreto motor is that right secreto motor and then there is sympathetic supply to this gland right which is vasomotor supply to the blood vessels related with this gland now let's start with the parasympathetic supply here is yes in the lower part of the pons this is pons and here is medulla in the lower part of the pons in the tegmentum uh, there is a nucleus and this nucleus parasympathetic nucleus this is called superior salivatory nucleus and under it here should be inferior. yes inferior salivatory nucleus here it is superior, superior salivatory nucleus right and within this parasympathetic column of course here it is Adinger Westfall nucleus and below it is yes dorsal nucleus of vagus in the brain stem these are parasympathetic nuclei they are, they are paired right now out of this Adinger Westfall nucleus give parasympathetic supply to the ciliary ganglion right superior salivatory nucleus gives parasympathetic supply through the seventh nerve right to the pterygopalatine ganglion and submandibular ganglion inferior salivatory nucleus gives parasympathetic supply to aortic ganglion aortic ganglion and dorsal nucleus of vagus it gives parasympathetic supply to so many structures in the head and neck and the thorax and abdomen we will not focus at that at this very moment let's focus on this part what is this superior salivatory nucleus now I will draw superior salivatory nucleus here this is superior salivatory nucleus it has upper part and lower part the neurons in upper part neurons or cell bodies which are present in upper part their parasympathetic fibers are going to the pterygopalatine ganglion and eventually eventually these fibers go to the lacrimal gland that is why this upper part of yes 
अपर पार्ट ऑफ स्पीरियर सेलिब्रेटरी न्यूक्लियस इज ऑल्सो कॉल्ड लेक्रीमेटरी न्यूक्लियस लेक्रीमेटरी न्यूक्लियस सो डोंट कंफ्यूज दीज टू टर्म्स स्पीरियर बिकॉज सम बुक्स विल राइट द नर्व सप्लाई टू लेक्रीमल ग्लैंड इज गोइंग थ्रू कमिंग फ्रॉम lacrimatory nucleus and other books will say that parasympathetic outflow which is eventually going to stimulate the lacrimal gland that is coming from superior salivary nucleus so let's make it clear once forever that superior salivary nucleus right its upper pa upper superior part of the nucleus has the cell bodies which give parasympathetic outflow which goes to tergo palatine ganglion specially to lacrimal gland right so we can say that lacrimatory nucleus is upper part of the superior salivary nucleus lacrimatory nucleus is upper part of the superior salivary nucleus now let's come back from here which fiber will go out preganglionic parasympathetic which preganglionic parasympathetic fibers right now these fibers when they exit the central nervous system they are not alone they have another group of fibers with them right and they are making a bundle here now what are the other fibers actually along with it there are some taste sensory fibers what are they taste. some sensory fibers and these sensory fibers which go in central nervous system and connected with the tractus so nucleus nice. nucleus of the tractus solitarius or we call this nucleus of solitary tract right now these sensory fibers which are central nervous system in the central nervous system in basically in the uh, medulla they are connected with the tract nucleus of tractus solitarius these fibers are taste fibers these are taste, taste fibers. fibers then there are some other sensory fibers as well now other sensory fibers which are here and yes these two more type of sensory fibers are there let me tell you what they are these are going for the taste right and fibers which are going for taste they are called special visceral afferents what is this special visceral afferent then these fibers these are also sensory right and these fibers are going to the trigeminal nuclear system and they are called general visceral no general somatic somatic afferent right these are for touch pain and temperature fibers which are going along with this parasympathetic fibers uh, contributing to the facial nerve right and then these are general visceral afferent right it means that i have made four types of fibers here this is parasympathetic outflow along with that there are other fibers that taste fiber. taste fiber sensory taste fiber general somatic afferent touch and pain and temperature fiber which will eventually go to the ear right and these are general visceral afferent which are actually eventually bringing sensations from the palate and the nose and paranasal sinuses now why i put these four types of fibers together there is a reason for that right these fibers as a bundle yes they are entering into a foramen which leads to a canal which is going to the ear this is called this is called internal acoustic meatus these fibers four type of fibers as a bundle are entering into this right this group of fibers now hold this group of fibers right this group of fibers is that right this bundle of fiber has a special name what is that name yes of s yes they are making a special bundle what is the name of this bundle i'm 100% sure you have heard of this bundle but you are hiding your great knowledge yes hamad what is the name of this bundle having parasympathetic outflow from superior salivary nucleus along with that some taste fiber and some sensory fibers for touch pain and temperature which are added to the ear uh, and some 
general visceral sensory fibers which are going eventually to nose, paranasal, senses and palate. Yes. What is the name of this bundle? It is not called a tamponade. It means I need to tell you what is called a tamponade. Yes. Lesser proposal nerve. I'm going to jump from some high roof. Yes. Wrong. You have heard of this? Yes. It is nervous intermedius. Have you heard of it? Have you heard of it? Nervous intermedius. Which is the sensory root of the facial nerve. This is a component of the facial nerve. So once forever, it should be clear what is nervous intermedius. Because in the books, why I explain it so clearly? Because in the books you will read that parasympathetic outflow is component of the nervous intermediate. So what is nervous intermediate? Right? This is the sensory root of the facial nerve along with the vasomotor fiber. Uh, sorry, secreto, secreto, along with secretomotor fibers from superior salivatory nerve. And then of course you must be knowing now, I hope you will not disappoint me. Uh, there are fibers which go like that and they are going. Yes. What is this? Facial nerve motor component. And it's not called a temporary. Why you are fixed? You don't call it called a temporary. I think I need to tell what is called a temporary. Later on, I will tell you. So actually, now listen carefully. These are two bundles, right? Onward in diagram, I will show para parasympathetic fibers coming, pre-ganglion fibers coming from superior salivatory nuclear as green, and all the sensory fibers. I will show them as one. In diagram but you know there are three types of sensory fibers is that right and this component I will tell you now this component yes this what is this this is nervous intermedius and this is facial nerve nucleus and of course here is a someone sitting here nucleus of the abducent nerve facial nerve fibers take a curve and facial nerve proper fiber they are going like that right so what is this facial nerve motor component what is this facial, facial nerve motor component so when facial nerve fibers emerge at pontomedullary junction right they are coming as motor root and sensory root motor root is of course motor root sensory root is also called nervous, nervous intermediate and sensory root is not only sensory, actually it has secretomotor fibers with it too. Yes, you have a question. So what are these terms mean? Special, visceral, offhand, semantic? Okay, now you want to know this thing. What is special, visceral, afferent? These are afferent means sensory fibers coming from the viscera which are very special. For example, taste is not everywhere. That is especially in your tongue. You cannot taste from your nose or your hand. Is that right? But if we say general visceral afferent, visceral sensations coming from generally from the viscera, like feelings of distension, irritation. They, are coming, they may be coming from lungs, they may be coming from GIT, they may be coming from, uh, you can say, nose or from pharynx or larynx or esophagus. Such kind of fibers are general visceral afferent. But taste is special in one area. So we call it special visceral up front. Am I clear? And then there are general somatic up front. These are general fiber which are sensory but somatic. Somatic system means uh, from musculoskeletal primarily. Like in, this include touch, pain and temperature and pressure. Is that right? Yes. So right now we, we are mainly concerned only with what is this? This motor fibers preganglionic parasympathetic fibers which are going to the lacrimal yeah. gland and these should be not afferent these green should be efferents so these are general visceral efferents and these are branchiomotor you know it's, uh, facial nerve muscles facial muscles which are supplied by the facial nerve they are derived from the second branchial arch Right? So these fibers are called also branchiomotor fibers. Branchiomotor fibers. You are trying to distract me, huh? Okay. Is it clear now? So now we move ahead. From here, these fibers, they are going, yes.
they are going through this canal and this canal is going towards the ear they are going to the middle. ear middle ear so i will draw the middle ear structure here yeah this is the middle ear medial wall this is its posterior wall this is middle ear anterior side and this is lateral side right uh, let's suppose this is the anterior wall of middle ear anteriorly is facing towards your front here should be yes lateral wall this is lateral wall here is medial wall of the middle ear uh, of course this promontory and this oval window and this round window right this is the posterior wall and all of you know in the medial wall here it is what is it facial canal horizontally running backward and from here now facial canal turns downward and eventually it comes out at stylomastoid foramen facial nerve from here now we have to see what happens to these fibers in relationship to this right actually these sensory fibers now i'm showing what are these fibers these are vasomotor secretory motor fibers parasympathetic preganglionic parasympathetic fiber and these are group of sensory fibers you know which sensory are there the taste fibers there and other right general visceral afferent and special visceral afferent which are taste fibers and general somatic afferent now when sensory fibers reach here uh, they make a ganglion here they make a ganglion. they have their cell bodies here and they make a very big swelling and this swelling is called geniculate ganglion what is this geniculate ganglion so geniculate ganglion has cell bodies related with the taste fibers touch pain temperature fibers of related with the facial nerve and also general visceral afferent fibers these are the cell bodies now what about these parasympathetic fibers here these parasympathetic fibers will divide into two group at the level of at the geniculate right ganglia now these fibers some of them will separate and some of them will continue into what is this facial canal, facial canal. is that right yes, i will tell you where the separate fibers will go but don't forget what is this facial motor, motor component of the facial nerve, facial nerve. right now this motor component fibers right they pass through this and they enter into facial canal, canal. these motor fibers they pass through this and then they enter into yes what is this facial without synapsing here and without having any cell body is that right so these are which fibers brachio motor fibers of facial nerve on the way they give branch to stapedius and eventually they emerge at stylomastoid foramen and give supply to the muscles of the facial expression and some other fibers uh, muscles here is that clear we are not focusing on that what we are going to focus that these sensory fibers for the taste most of these also come along with brachio motor fibers right and not only these some of the parasympathetic fibers also come along this pathway clear now this was your facial canal in the now a very important here i will put it like this this is your facial canal any question up to this now from geniculate ganglion as i told you some uh, this parasympathetic fibers go along with the facial nerve proper 
and some parasympathetic fibers separate from here right and along with this parasympathetic fibers there are some sensory fibers too right now this bundle these fibers preganglionic parasympathetic fibers from superior salivary nucleus along with some taste fibers and some other sensory fibers they are separate from the geniculate ganglion they move upward and medially and eventually they jump into middle yes middle cranial they reach the middle cranial fossa so let me draw exactly how it this is your tigo palatine ganglion uh, fossa now these fibers this bundle it moves upward and medially through the petrous part of temporal bone all this is within the petrous part of temporal bone because middle ear cavity is also within the petrous part of temporal bone now this bundle it moves upward from the geniculate ganglion and medially and eventually it finds itself yes it finds itself in middle cranial fossa in the in the floor of middle cranial fossa is that right while this bundle of fibers are going through the middle cranial fossa as they move medially and forward they find here a foramen right and uh, this foramen yes i'm going to ask you the name of this foramen be ready there is a foramen here right and this foramen yes this foramen is foramen lacerum very good there is foramen lacerum lacerum here right from the middle what is this middle cranial fossa these fiber reach to the top of the foramen lacerum and then they go little downward and again both of these types of fibers right any question up to this now just leave it here i will bring sympathetic fibers also there right if you put spinal cord here for right spinal cord section i'm going to put this is t1 and t2 from here sympathetic preganglionic fibers come out t1 and t2 t2 level these sympathetic preganglionic fibers they move upwards through the cervical sympathetic chain through the cervical sympathetic chain without relaying into lower cervical sympathetic ganglion and the reach and here preganglionic fibers terminate this is superior cervical ganglion what is it superior cervical ganglion right from the superior cervical ganglion from here the post ganglionic fibers come out which fibers come out post ganglionic fiber come out i will make here sympathetic chain and here are superior now the, the from here the post ganglionic fibers emerge some of these fibers need to reach to the lacrimal gland we are also bringing parasympathetic fibers eventually they will also reach to the lacrimal gland that is final destination now these post ganglionic sympathetic fibers as they are moving upward on the way they find an artery going up and this artery is internal carotid artery very good now internal carotid artery it reaches base of the middle canal fossa from there it enters into a canal this is called carotid canal what is this this canal is carotid canal which in t upward and interiorly it bends and opens in upper part of foramen lacerum so what really happens here is internal carotid artery and yes 
this is going upward right internal carotid artery rather I will not draw this component so for the sake of clarity internal carotid artery I will just draw up to this level right but actually it continues upward to the cavernous sinus and further here were your which fibers parasympathetic and these were which fibers sensory including some taste fiber from the soft palate and other sensory now these post ganglionic which fibers sympathetic fibers they go make a plexus around the internal carotid artery and some of these fibers from this plexus they separate they separate from here and these some fibers separate and they fuse with these fibers right now these are sympathetic fibers and these are post ganglionic and these are parasympathetic fibers which are pre-ganglionic and here they will shake the hands at the top of the interior part of foramen laserum in life foramen laserum is usually closed by fibrocartilaginous fibrocartilage right and only mystery veins and some little arteries pass through it Caro internal carotid artery does not enter into foramen laserum does not enter from below right it's from the side and then moves upward now here which fibers came parasympathetic with some sensory and here are sympathetic post ganglionic now both of them when they shake hand I think they intend to have some romance so they enter into some private tunnel there's a private tunnel between the foramen lacerum and pterygopalatine fossa there's a special tunnel here bony canal they enter into this bony canal and then they are in love with each other right for a while at least right these fibers and these fibers of sympathetic all of them are going together is that right and all of them eventually reach to a ganglion here and this ganglion is pterygopalatine ganglion here pre-ganglionic parasympathetic fibers terminate and then they exit and then they exit and sympathetic fibers have already synapsed here so post ganglionic sympathetic fibers reach here but they pass through it without any synapses and sensory fibers also reach here and these sensory fibers which reach here right they eventually go to palate soft palate palatine taste buds is that right yes. now up to this I will tell the names of different component of nerves right let's come back and put the names